Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. So where we last, last left things off with our Windows X Lite 11 process was we had finished our scan of the system after installing a slew of software and running updates on the system. And we found 65 infos in our scan. So we could see that here. And specifically what we looked at is we looked at to see why we're getting so much more than we would get out of the 40 from our vanilla version of Windows 11. Now some of this is due to the fact that we don't have as much of an operating system here. So we're missing patches and security uh, portions of the registry that are required for the scan to actually give us legit uh, output. So the 40 infos. But then there's other things in here that we can fix. Like for instance, these are password configurations. So let's start here. This should be an easy five vulnerabilities that we could resolve. So let's go over to our Windows X Lite system and let's resolve these five vulnerabilities. Okay, so what do we have to do to do that? So we'll have to go to start, we'll right click on start, we'll go to computer management. We're going to select users and groups, for local users and groups rather. We're going to go to users. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to make sure that we have an account. If you don't have an account, now is the time to do new user, add a new user in here. And then once you add the new user, go to properties, member of, and make sure you add them to the administrators group. And set a good password. Now a good password means it has to be 12 characters or more. It has to have uh, special characters, numbers, capitals, lower cases could be a sentence, something that I've recently come across for whatever God knows reason. Do not use spaces in your passwords. If you don't know why, then add it down in the comments as to why you wouldn't do that. And I will gladly tell you why you won't do that. But do not add spaces into Windows passwords. So set your password. Once you have your password set, the built-in account, which is called admin, Go to properties on that account and uncheck the password never expires. Click apply. Check the member of. Go in here again. Go to properties. Set account is disabled and hit apply. So now the account admin is disabled. And if we want to go an additional step here to resolve yet another one of those infos, right click on that thing and choose set password and hit proceed. Now enter some password in there. It's got to be at least eight characters. So once you have your password set, just hit OK. Password has been set. Great. Next thing we're going to do is do the same thing for the administrator account. Proceed. Enter in a password. Once you have your password set, click OK. Click OK. I'm going to go right click and go into the administrator account again and uncheck the password never expires and make sure the account is still disabled. Hit OK and hit apply or apply and OK. Sorry. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing with the default account. Go in here, check, make sure you uncheck the uh, password never expires, hit apply, check the member, that's okay. Then you go to guest, go to properties, make sure password never expires is not changed or, or is not selected, hit apply, hit okay. And then you're going to do the same thing for the WGA. You're going to make sure that the password never expires is not checked. Hit apply, hit OK. And now once you do that, what will happen is when we run the scan again, that's going to tell us, that's going to get specifically rid, rid of the uh, never change password info. So that's one. It'll get rid of the um, local user account information for disabled accounts because, again, they were set to never expire. So it'll get rid of that one too. Um, and then the group user list. It should get rid of that as well because so what the group user list actually is caused by is if we go into admin, the users and admin shouldn't be in the same group in a work group mode. Now in a domain configuration that's different. You want to be part of domain users and domain admins because it gives you access to certain things or everything. But in your work group mode, when you create a user, you don't want them to be both a user and an admin. That causes conflict and issues in the Windows operating system. So don't do that. So that should resolve now three of the issues that we had. The user group list, the disabled accounts, and the never change the password. And then the password never expires. Because we changed the password, passwords are not set to never expire. Now the last one is, is the user has not logged in. And that's because we haven't logged into the Tor account. So what we're going to do is we're going to close out of this. 
We're going to right click. We're going to do sign out. And then we're going to log back into the system as that account. So now on system boot, you should get prompted with the start all back configuration, which is basically the configuration for your GUI and what you want it to look like. Now, in the last one, I just did the default settings on this thing, but this time I just clicked on the remastered Windows 7, so now it should look like Windows 7, which it does, which just, again, this is why I like this operating so much. It gives you so much functionality that should have been part of Windows 11 in the first place, but it wasn't. So I really do think that this is a, a great OS. So I'm really excited to see if we could trim this down to the 40 infos that we get on the vanilla version. Okay, so another one is going to require us to go into the local group policy just because it's easier to do that. And specifically the reason why is because one of the alerts that we get inside of our configuration on our Nessus scan is the password policy. The amount of days, the amount of complexity that the passwords must be in order for it to pass the compliance standard. So to do that, we're just going to go into gpedit.msc. And that's going to open up our group policy editor. And in here, we're going to specifically go to the security settings and our local policies. Sorry, if we want to go to the account policies, I'm having a hard time expanding this here. Okay, so we got to go to the account policies and password policies. And then on the right-hand side here, we're going to see the password policy configuration. And we want to change this. We want to actually want to make this 90 days because it's not necessary to do it every 42 days anymore. We want to set the minimum password age to one day. We want to send the minimum character limit to 12 characters. We want to set the audit to at least 8 characters. Password, uh, passwords mu must meet the complexity requirements, has to be set to enabled. And then we have something for relaxed minimum password length limits. Uh, we're going to disable this. So if you enable this, then what it does is it forces your Windows system for the system accounts to use complex passwords. But the problem with that is if you have your password policy complexity turned on too strong or too high, then older versions of Windows can't see passwords past a certain character set. I think 2012 R2, the cutoff was 12 characters. In, 2000, in Windows 11, it's 14 characters. So 14 character password can't be used on a 2012 R2 system out of the box because if you do that, it'll cause the operating system not to function correctly. And that's the same on like Windows XP, which I think was eight characters as the absolute max. So if you do 14 characters, you just never be able to log into the system, even if you have your password set correctly. So we're just gonna turn that off and hit okay. And then store password with reverse encryption. Make sure that's set to disable and hit OK. And then enforce password history. So we're going to say 24. And then hit OK. So that should be pretty close to what NIST has as the rough configuration for 2024. So now that that's set, what we could do is we could just close out of that. So now when we run the scan again, the scan's not going to come back with one of the um, alerts for the SMB configuration for easy to obtain password policy. Because even if it pulls it back, the password policy it's going to pull back is not going to be the default, which is what it's barking about. Again, these are infos. These are security configuration recommendations, but they are not security flaws like a medium or a high or a critical alert would be on a um, Nessus scan. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to relaunch the scan so we can scan the system. We should reduce by at least six, maybe more. We'll see. Okay, so something else that I noticed that's still running on this particular system is the, ad the advertising ID for Windows 11. So I want to stop that. And specifically to do that, we just got to run the netstack command. So when I run the netstack command right here, we're going to see port 5040 and PID 1100. So if we go over here to PID 1100, it's a service host. But if we do uh, test list forward slash SVC and then find the 1100, we will find uh, under servicehost.exe, we'll see the actual advertising stuff. So there's, there's really no reason to run this since we don't have Microsoft Edge installed in this operating system. So I'm gonna get rid of this particular listening port. And to do that, we're gonna come over here to the 1100 and we're gonna go to the services. 
I'm going to see the service name as CDP SVC. And if I go to the actual services, so open the services console, we have to look specifically for that CDP SVC. So I believe that's this one here. And we'll just go to properties to confirm it, confirm it rather, CDP SVC it is. So we're going over to here and we're going to choose disable and apply and then hit stop. And then OK, we can exit out of this. Okay, so now if I go and I hit the up arrow again for 1100, I still have it as listening or rather connected through the uh, service host. But if I go up here and I do another net stat for the listening port, we'll see that the 54 or the 5040 is gone. So this PID is still being used for the, uh, the broker service and the event viewer. It just gets rid of the CDP service, which is the stupid... Um, service that's used for your advertising ID for Windows 11. And again, since this doesn't exist on the system, there's absolutely no reason we can't just stop it. So we stopped it. We're not listening on it anymore. So now what we're going to do is we're going to relaunch our scan again and see if that reduces the amount of information that comes back. Okay, guys, so our scan's finally finished. And if we look at our scan results, we went from 65 info to 62. So we lost three. And when we dig deeper into here, our multiple issues on our Windows configuration, for the most part, is just things that are on the operating system but are not activated because the applications are missing. So you would have to install things in order for these to be interactive or actually uh, secured. Additional things that we could configure if we really wanted to is the multiple issues on our Windows users here. So if we deleted our disabled accounts, like our admin account and our administrator account, and just had guests, then this wouldn't show up. If we went in here and then we went to where the users never logged into, so nobody's ever logged into the local admin account or administrator account. The reason why is because in Windows 11, it's default disabled. So that's an info, but it, it's pretty pointless to have this on here. So these two things could really just be removed. There's no reason for these things to be in here. Um, so then if we dig further into our Windows issues, for instance, right, we know that all of this stuff is really a configuration on the actual system itself as far as the applications missing. So this is another thing we can snooze. Because it's not necessary for those things to be on our report. And if we do that and we drill back down and we start to look at our actual configuration now, um, we'll see that the snoozed reports are no longer listed here. So we really only have 22 vulnerabilities. So if we know that 40 is where we're supposed to be on our Windows 11 system out of the box and now we're at 22 we've already secured the system more than the system would be had it been been an out of the box windows 11 vanilla system so hopefully just knowing that if you go through the password configuration and change those settings that that's helpful um, and then also make sure you run the smb signing script which i'll add into the description and then lastly you're going to want to make sure that you configure the landman server to uh, restrict anonymous authentication, make sure that value is set to one, which on this particular system, it is by default. So somebody, whoever packaged this thing already went in there and made sure that that secure function has already been added to the operating system. So for just S and giggles on this particular system, let's re-enable our Windows firewall and then last, let's run an additional scan to see if we see anything at all. Okay, so I ran another scan on this system, again, without the, um, firewall on and I came back with 58 this time and the difference between the 62 and the 58 is really just the addition of the uh, VMware tools update so once that's applied then that kicks off an additional four off the actual list so now we're down to 58 of the 40 that would be on the vanilla version of Windows 11 um, with that said the only vulnerabilities we really have on this particular system which would be infos that we could reconfigure based off of our current scan is 15 which again, if we compare that to the 40 that are out of the box for our bone stock vanilla Windows 11 system, that's pretty good. Um, now, with that said, if we jump back into our x 11 system, we go back into config with our 58 vulnerability configuration here. Um, I will say that I did attempt to run this with the Windows firewall on, and it does not show anything, uh, which means that even ICMP or ping is denied. So that's a good configuration for security out of the box for a Windows 11 machine. 
So hopefully, again, this was helpful for you guys. Feel free to follow on. Hopefully, I'll release another video uh, tomorrow um, to continue on our, with our Windows 11 um, X Lite system. And I may jump into additional X Lite configuration uh, systems because they seem to be the best developed so far. Well, with the the exception of maybe the Ghost uh, Spectre systems, which also I like those as well. So it'd be good to find more of those systems to check into. Um, thanks again for uh, sticking around.